The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, Sandy Vicanti. Uh, I'm supervisor here of producer services at IMS, and just want to say thank you so much uh, for everyone uh, attending on this uh, holiday weekend. So greatly appreciate it. Before we um, hand it over to Baltimore Life. I want to do a couple slides uh, before then, before we get into such a great and important webinar. So with uh, IMS, we have several different ways that we try to help grow your business. And one of them um, for an agent is an IMS business builder. And what we do is when you entrust a referral to us and that referral gets contracted with us, we give you a check for $50 just to say thank you. When that same referral places business with us, you will get indefinitely um, 20 basis points on each piece of placed business that they do with us. That does not come out of your commission. It does not come out of uh, the, your referred agent's commission. That comes directly from IMS as a thank you. So as long as they're continuing to place business with us, you're continuing to get that 20 basis point override. For all agents, we have something called a marketing reimbursement account. And what that is, is think of it as a savings account for business expenses. For every $100,000 of premium that you place with us, whether that's life, annuity, MedSup, long-term care, combination thereof, we put $100 in that marketing reimbursement account. So let's say you have $500 in there and you had a, a business invoice for a thousand dollars you did a seminar or you purchased a computer submit that invoice to us and we pay up to 50 percent of that invoice as long as that money is there in your marketing reimbursement account and again that comes directly from IMS as a thank you for entrusting us with your business we also have something for brand new producers and what that is called is a new producer builder so for your first six months, if you place $100,000 of business with us, again, that's single premium life, uh, annuity, long-term care, MedSep, combination thereof, you can choose a $750 cash bonus or you can choose a two-year producer website. If you'd like to hold off because you think that uh, you believe that you will place $300,000 with us in that first six months, you can choose a $1,500 gift card. You can choose a social security program with a 3,000 piece mailing, or you can choose a $2,000 marketing reimbursement account. Uh, so we put $2,000 in that marketing reimbursement account for you. If you think, gosh, I'm gonna go gangbusters here and in my first six months, I'm going to place half million dollars of business, with IMS, uh, then you can choose a 4,000 piece mailing in seminar coaching with Dave Pimper, uh, you can, top producer of ours. Uh, you can choose a 5,000 piece mailing in seminar coaching with another top producer of ours, Matt Gill. Or you can choose my favorite, uh, truly is my favorite, a Ritz Carlton Travel Rewards Getaway where you plan your own destination. And again, that's just for us saying thank you so much for entrusting us with your business. We also have a very strong back office support, so we don't stop um, supporting you with that contract that you submit. We continue to try to help you work smarter and not harder. And how we do that is by giving you different building tools and resources, whether it's um, running quotes for you, pulling forms, um, helping you with case design assistance. So if you call and say, gosh, I have a client who has $100,000, we're concerned about long-term care, but they don't want to um, apply for a long-term care policy, we're not too crazy about an annuity, uh, we can go ahead and uh, design that case for you, get you out some quotes, and try to help guide you um, to help your client and their needs. We also help with um, submission of application. So when you submit an application to us, we scrub that application, make sure nothing is missing. We give you a call, let you know if we do need anything. Uh, if it's a life policy and it needs exams and labs, we'll get that ordered for you. And then we follow that 
case all the way through the underwriting process, we are touching that case every three days and we're looking to make sure it's staying on track for a quick uh, issue uh, in placement. We're making sure that if there's any additional information that's needed that you're told right away, we follow it all the way through the commission process to make sure that you get paid just as quickly as possible. So again, um, we just don't want to stop when you submit a contract with us. We're here to help you along the way at every turn. We also have a very strong marketing team. With our marketing team, if you need any handouts, flyers, postcards, any newsletters, uh, if you have a logo and it's just tired, it needs refreshed, or you don't have a logo, we're able to create that for you. Same with business cards and brochures. If you have a website that's a little tired or you don't have a website and you would really like to create one, we'll create and manage that for you. We also help with those online newsletters, getting those sent out. And what's really big right now is social media advertising, especially on Facebook. So if you um, aren't strong on that social media advertising will help guide you through that to make sure that we get you and your company out there for everyone to see. We have a great website that we actually go to uh, to run quotes and pull forms. It's imesinc.com and that is available 24 hours a day. You're able to get into pull quotes, forms, you're able to look at current industry link in news. You can look at our annuity grids, which show our top annuities, whether they're fixed or indexed annuities. Um, gosh, if you would like to look at our webinar schedule, that's available on our website, uh, as well as our recorded webinars. So if you were unable to make a webinar and you'd like to go back and kind of um, browse to see what we've done in the past, our webinar library will have every recorded webinar that we've done and you have access to that. And that again is right from our website. So a great tool to have. I strongly suggest if you haven't registered, you register for that now um, to make sure that you have that available to you. I'm going to send out a poll question on this, and this is for our IMS Wealth Management. So when the DOL came out uh, with the rulings and how it was going to affect our industry and agents, we found it really important to make sure that we help agents keep as much business in-house as they can. And by doing that, we created IMS Wealth Management. By saying yes, all you're doing is asking for additional information on um, the DOL ruling, the changes with that ruling, how it does affect you and your business and what we can do to help you uh, increase revenue. So, you know, mon manage money fees is a recurring revenue. Um, majority of advisors see an increase in that fixed and uh, revenue, so which is amazing. You also do a great job with client retention because with client retention, um, you know, your clients don't have to go outside of you if they're looking for any um, financial advice from a financial advisor because you're viewed differently. You're viewed as a fiduciary and not as an advisor. If you're concerned that, gosh, I don't want to get my 65, I have no interest in doing that, there's still ways that you're able to um, keep that money in-house with you without getting that 65. Again, by checking yes, that is just trying to um, get some additional information on how we can help you with that. So I'm going to get that closed out. have that closed and we're going to go to oops, sorry about that our life and annuity Academy so excited for this again I'll put out a poll question by checking yes you're just asking for additional information our next Academy so life and annuity Academy is October 17th through the 19th and that is industry recognized we're so proud we have close to a thousand agents apply we take between 35 and 40 from across the United States we pay for the airfare lodging meals you don't pay for anything it's a two-day training 
We go over different sales ideas and strategies from top producers. Uh, if you're concerned about indexed annuities or you don't have a strong handle on that, we unravel that um, myth for you and when to use an indexed annuity and income writer. We go over different threats and trends in the industry and how that's going to affect you and as well as different trends coming up that you may not know about so you can plan ahead. We go over different seminar systems whether you're looking for coffee and cookies in a library or a more formal seminar where you are planning a dinner sit down dinner seminar different case management and marketing as well how to market for single premium life how to market for infinite banking uh, different insurance concepts we do wealth transfer tools cannot stress enough amazing information agents all over the United States we pay for everything again by checking yes you're just asking for additional information and we'll be more than happy to get that out to you and answer any questions that you may have I'm going to get that closed out in just a couple seconds here so please get everyone's answers in okay so we also offer at the end, before I turn this over to um, Gary Voith with Baltimore Life, so in addition to Baltimore Life's amazing trip and every other carrier's trip that they may offer, we also offer a trip, and that is to the Ritz-Carlton in Naples, Florida. That will be August 25th through the 29th of 2019. It will be for you and a guest, and we want just as many people to be able to uh, attend as possible. So we have a long invitational period from January 1st of 2018 all the way through June 30th of 2019. How to get you and a guest here is with $3 million of annuity premium. You can do $1.5 million of med sub premium, 2.25 of single premium life, 250,000 of life target premium or 600,000 of long-term care premium or you can do a combination thereof. Um, I can't stress enough it's like a family uh, when you go to our trips it's great opportunity again it's for you and a guest only way to get there is to start riding with IMS so please uh, start riding with IMS we would love to see everyone there. What I'm going to do now is change it over to Gary Voith he, just to let you know, Baltimore Life is such a great friend of IMS. Great company. They have amazing products and they really care about the agent and the client and getting business placed and through the door just as quickly as possible with all of their great products. Gary is the vice president there and he has a lot of great information to tell you. So Gary, if you'd like to take it over. Gary. Thank you very much. And have my mute button on. That's uh, not always good. Happy Friday to everyone. Happy holiday Friday uh, weekend for you all. Hopefully you have some um, fun plans, relaxing plans for you and your family this weekend and uh, be safe out there on the roads. But uh, thanks for the opportunity again to uh, give you guys some additional information about Baltimore Life's tax efficient asset transfer program. In today's session, we're going to be talking about two of our products in our portfolio our generation legacy and our single premium whole life product both of these products are really designed with your senior client in mind who have what we like to call some leave behind money money they don't want to uh, live on but they simply want to leave behind thus creating a legacy for their family no matter whether you have cash coming from uh, after-tax cash vehicles like cds money markets mutual funds or 1035 exchanges or if you have money coming from annuities or qualified plans, uh, both of these products are uh, set up that they can uh, satisfy the needs for those types of funds uh, being transferred over. So let's talk a little bit about the market before we get started. It's absolutely huge. About one to three trillion dollars in wealth is being transferred each and every year. And that's continuing to happen between now and the year 2052. We know that about 55% of your client's wealth is moving on to their family members and about 16% of that wealth is moving on to their favorite charities. So yes, 71% of your client's wealth is moving along to people 
in organizations they know and love. The question is, are they maximizing the amount of money they're trying to pass along? And are they really doing it in the most tax efficient way? First product we're gonna talk about is Generation Legacy. And this product is really designed, uh, again, to take money not needed for daily living, but single premium funds from either non-qualified deferred annuities or other qualified plan funds, such as 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, and the like. Um, you know, great way to leave a legacy for your client's family and favorite charities, and thus increase the estate value through the use of a life insurance product. The issue ages, as we'll learn, are ages 60, through age 80. And our product, by writing a single application with us, we will issue two products, a single premium immediate annuity that will receive the transfer of the funds, along with a limited premium payment whole life product. Over a period of either seven or 10 years, that's be able to automatically make payments to the life product until it becomes paid up. We'll show you how that works. But again, write a single app, have both products issued in Baltimore Life. Once they're issued, we'll administer those products seamlessly together to provide all the benefits we'll be talking about. We have simplified underwriting through four tables of underwriting, as well as automatically issued in all states where it's approved, that's the majority of the states, is our accelerated death benefit rider that we'll get into. Now, what's another option or another way that we can um, use our Generation Legacy product? How often have you been in situations where you have a married couple and you have one individual in that, in that marriage that is healthy and can be insured through life insurance and then another um, you know, person, another spouse, who in fact is not healthy, cannot be insured, uh, and, but they have funding. They have funding coming from annuities and qualified plans. Well, in that situation, wouldn't it be great if we could take the funding from the unhealthy spouse to pay for the premiums on the healthy spouse. And we call that our spouse option for Generation Legacy. Simply put, uh, you have a life insurance uh, policy, let's say on one spouse, and the SPIA is set up, the rollover from the uh, qualified funds from the unhealthy spouse gets rolled into the SPIA. And the SPIA will be paying the premiums on that life product for the healthy spouse through the seven or 10 years like we talked about. This is a great way to deplete assets from an unhealthy spouse and of course great, create a much uh, higher estate value and a legacy for their family and, and ultimately deplete those assets that have to be depleted anyway. Um, you know, because eventually when they do die, they're just going to be passing that tax along to their family members or to their heirs. Um, the key thing to remember is that when this is setting, uh, set up, the annuant, in this case the unhealthy spouse, waives the right for the beneficiary, the healthy spouse, uh, to commute the future SPIA payments to a lump sum. Those payments are going to be used to pay for the life insurance. That's how it's set up, and those funds would be exhausted over the seven or ten years to pay the life insurance until it's paid up. So that's the spouse option for Generation Legacy. So no matter whether you're working with an individual who is going to fund their own life insurance through this or a spouse who will do it, we have those options. So what about the marketplace? It's huge, about $2.7 trillion of enforced deferred annuities are out there. About 65% of that money are in tax qualified employer-based plans. About 35% are non-qualified deferred annuities. As you well know, a significant share of those annuity funds especially are just gonna be transferred to the next generation. People buy the great annuity product because of growth, getting a decent rate of return and tax deferral. Most people never use the third leg of the stool, and that is the annuitization feature of an annuity product. So they're just gonna pass the money along. The, the thing to remember is that at 70 and a half, there is gonna be a, minimum, a required minimum distribution on that product, right? We know that. And of course, if the annuitant dies, eventually when they do die, if they just allowed that to build over the years and never took a distribution, of the funds, the tax on that gain is simply going to be passed to their heirs, who are probably in a higher tax bracket. So we know annuities are great products. There's absolutely no doubt of that. They're great products to not only give you growth, but also to give you income. But if your goal is not to get income from that annuity, and most annuity products aren't, wouldn't it be great that you could pass that money along in a greater amount uh, through the use of a generation legacy product? And here's how it works. 
let's conceptually think of generation legacy as a gift, a gift your client's trying to pass along to the next generation. And in that gift box, you're going to help your client facilitate the transfer of money from an annuity or qualified funds. Now, with writing a single application with this, as I mentioned, we're going to issue two products, a single premium immediate annuity that receives the transfer of those funds, along with a limited premium payment whole life product. Over a period of either seven or 10 years, depending on the issue age of the client, Baltimore Life will automatically make annual premiums from the SPIA to pay premiums on the life product. Nothing for the agent to do, nothing for the client to do. So what dictates the payment pattern? It's the issue age. The client 60 to 74 will issue a 10-year payout on the SPIA, along with the 10-year limited premium payment whole life product. If the client 75 to 80, a seven-year payout on the SPIA, along with the seven-year paid up life product. But here's where the benefits are really spelled out and get rich. What if the client were to die uh, during the period of time while the SPIA is making those annual premiums on the life product? Well, we know that if the client dies that the life insurance is always there to pay out an income tax-free death benefit that's greater than the single premium paid. But in addition, if the client dies during that seven to 10 year period, the remaining um, payments from the SPIA not used to fund the life insurance will also be paid to the named beneficiary. That really is the, the icing on the cake that in, insureds love, your clients will love when they see this because their beneficiaries are receiving both. So after the seven or 10 year period, the SPIA goes away, it's done its job, it's paid the life insurance policy. Now the life policy is fully paid up. It continues to provide an income tax-free death benefit greater than the single premium paid. It continues to build up cash value on a tax deferred basis. And yes, it continues to provide all the benefits that we'll talk about of the accelerated death benefit rider. So just to recap, the issue age is 60 to 80. We base our pricing on current age or age at last birthday. Now, the reason this is important is because you're going to be dealing with the transfer of funds from other products and institutions. And that transfer process may take 20 to 35 days, let's say. The thing is, we will issue the policy based on the day we receive the funds. We will issue it based on that client's age, based on the day we receive the funds. Now, the minimum premium to get this started is only $5,000. How many of your clients have multiple annuities out there stacked where, you know, you know, some might be used for income and the rest may only be used for growth? Those are great prospects for Generation Legacy. The average premium, by the way, we see on this is about sixty dollars to $65,000. So great single premium, uh, you know, for you. The maximum face amount that we'll issue on the life product based on that single premium paid is $450,000. Now we do have two underwriting classes, non-tobacco and tobacco, and within those underwriting classes, we'll issue any risk standard through table four, through our simplified underwriting process. And I'll be talking later about our point of sale underwriting process, where we give you immediate underwriting decisions on almost all those cases. Cash values, they accumulate in a non, on a non-participating basis. Partial surrenders, you can take partial surrenders from the, uh, the life policy, but they're permitted after the life policy becomes fully paid up. That's seven or 10 years. Loans are available really at any time at a maximum rate of 8%. So now let's talk about that accelerated death benefit rider because they truly can provide living benefits to your client at a time when it's needed most. This is by, by no stretch of the imagination a replacement of a good long-term care policy. But as you know, most seniors don't have the funds for a long-term care policy. So isn't it nice to know that they can accelerate the face amount of their life insurance policies? There are three health event triggers that allow your client to accelerate their life insurance face amounts. They are terminal illness, confinement to a qualified nursing home facility, and in situations of extended care, home health care, and adult daycare. This accelerated benefit can be taken advantage of and, and exercised any time after issue of the policy. And once accelerated, a lien for the amount of money taken will accumulate prior to death at an interest rate of 8%. The maximum that can accelerate, uh, be accelerated is $250,000. The minimum is $5,000. But here's the good news. This benefit is paid out once. It's paid in a lump sum, 
and these are unrestricted funds. Your client can use these funds for whatever reason they deem needed. So now let's talk about the definitions of these triggers and the percentages of potential payout. First trigger is terminal illness. Client must be diagnosed as terminally ill with a life expectancy of 12 months or less. In this case, they can accelerate up to a maximum of 75% of the phase. The second portion or the second rider covers qualified nursing and extended care. And in this situation, uh, for qualified nursing, the client needs to be considered chronically ill, we'll talk about that, and confined to a nursing home continuously for 90 days, but with the expectation of a permanent confinement. For extended care, they again must be chronically ill, have been so for at least 90 days, but now they're requiring care provided by either a licensed home health care agency or a licensed or state certified adult daycare center. In either of those situations, nursing home and extended care, they can accelerate up to 50% of the face amount. Now, there are about six or seven states in the country that have different provisions on these riders that generally will mean that the percentages will be uh, lower than 75 or 50 percent. An example of that is Pennsylvania and Indiana that have 65 percent on the terminal illness rider and uh, 40 percent on the qualified nursing and extended care. Our um, agent website has state approval charts out there for you for this product, and it will define if there is a difference in that rider and what those percentages would be. But clearly these riders are designed to pay cash now and still have remaining death benefit for the survivor in most all situations. That's why they're set up the way they are. So what do we mean by chronically ill? Well, if the client satisfies either of these defin definitions, we consider them chronically ill. The first is they can't perform two out of six activities of daily living. Maybe they're okay on their ADLs, but they could be suffering from a severe organic mental illness, such as Alzheimer's or dementia. In either case, we consider them to be chronically ill, as it applies again to that nursing home confinement and the extended care situations. So let's take a look at an example of how this payout could work. Here's a client who has a face amount of $100,000 on the life product. They're terminal, as you know is uh, designated by their doctor, 12 months or less to live. So they're going to take a maximum accelerated living benefit of $75,000, right? We do add a $100 service fee for that transaction. So the lien prior to death starts at $75,100. Now, if they were to die immediately after taking that cash, no time for interest to accrue on the lien, the remaining death benefit would simply be the face amount minus the original lien, giving you $24,900. But the more likely scenario is this one, and that is where death occurs one year after getting that cash payment of 75 grand. So now the remaining death benefit is the face amount less the original lien, plus one year's worth of interest, giving you a remaining life insurance benefit of 18892 now, this client in this set of circumstances, dying one year later, would have to live about um, four plus years for the interest to outrun the remaining death benefit. Pretty unlikely that would happen. It could happen, but very, very unlikely to happen. And that's why the percentages are set up the way they are. And that's why certain states have a lower percentage, because they want to reduce any possibility of it this uh, not paying some additional life insurance benefit out. So could these riders that are attached to the life policy, these accelerated death benefit riders, could they terminate for any reason? Well, they could terminate if the life policy ended where they're attached. And you might think, well, how could the life policy end if the SPIA is automatically paying the premium? Well, because these contracts are two separate contracts, the SPIA and the life product, the insured, let's say the first year gives you 100 grand and says, hey, I don't need this money. Let's set it up in the generation legacy product. Two years later, they come back to you and say, I do need as much money back as possible. What you would need to do is decouple the contract. And uh, that means cashing out the life policy that would have very little cash value and having the remaining payments of the P SPIA paid to the uh, survivor. But of course, the riders would end. If the insured dies, we pay a death benefit instead. And finally, what if you accelerate, let's say, under the nursing home provision at 50%? You can't accelerate a second time, that would be it, the riders are ended. The other scenario is what I alluded to earlier, and that is what if death occurs uh, and, and you know the, the lien basically exceeds 
the remaining death benefit. Let's say that client's terminal, they took their cash, but now they're living four plus years in a terminal condition. Very unlikely that would happen, but if it did, the riders would, um, would, would uh, terminate and so would the life policy. In that situation, you never want to get there because the owner does have the right to repay all or part of the lien at any time to keep this qualified as a life policy. Keep in mind that even though you accelerate a benefit, there's still cash value accumulating in the life pol policy income tax deferred. Also, if you have accelerated the benefit, you cannot also have or start a policy loan. You can't have a lien and a loan going on at the same time. The last thing to remind you of is that no matter whether you're accelerating our benefit or any company's similar benefit, you always want to tell your client to consult with their tax advisor. So let's look quickly at a potential payout here. Here's a client 70, non-tobacco user who's got 50 grand, let's say, coming from an annuity. We would issue a life policy in that case of 78,000, nearly $451. So at issue, this client has increased her estate by $28,451 keeping in mind that if she dies in the first 10 years, the remaining payments from the SPIA would also be paid. Now for the accelerated benefit though, look at these payouts I'm showing you on the screen. I mean, this is real cash to a senior at end of life, especially if they did not have long-term care insurance. And that's why the benefits of course are so powerful. So what's another tax advantage of this program? Uh, as it, and we think it has to do with the rollover of the money. If you're rolling money over from an IRA that's never seen tax before, or if you're rolling money from an annuity where there's a basis and a gain, eventually the tax on the gain on those products have to be paid for. Uncle Sam's going to get their tax on that SPIA portion. The life portion is income tax free. But because you're rolling the money, let's say from an IRA into this product, right? and you're gonna pay that money as premium over seven or 10 years of the life product, we're able to spread the tax out on that gain over the same 10 or seven year period. So your policy owner will in fact get a 1099 on the gain of that SPIA based on the payments of the life product each year. That's very, very important to know and I'll show you how you can illustrate that very clearly. The other nice thing is that the payment we make each year from the speed of the life product does satisfy the RMD rules, so you don't have to worry about that calculation. The last thing to tell you is that the life insurance is always income tax free as a death benefit, but the remaining payments from the SPIA that are paid out uh, to the beneficiary, if the client dies in that seven to 10 year period, the remaining payments of the SPIA would be taxable only on the portion of the money that's not been taxed before. So the Benny would get a 1099 on the SPIA distribution based on the taxable portion. The other last thing to tell you about tax is this. Because we're dealing with the transfer of funds from other qualified plans where there's a basis and a gain, we have to ask the question on our application, do you want a withholding of tax from the money we're rolling over? We have to ask the question, but this product is not set up to do a withholding up front on that gain. So please make sure you check on the application that you do not want tax withheld from the annuity that's being rolled over, because otherwise we have to send everything back to you. The product calculations just don't work. Let's face it, the, the annuitant wouldn't have the opportunity to spread the tax out on that gain over seven or 10 years. Now let's look at some premiums to death benefits. And I want you to start thinking about those prospects and clients you have out there, especially that have annuities or qualified funds are looking for ways to pass it along. Maybe they have certain funds they wanna create an income for, but the other funds they just simply wanna pass along. This is a 65 year old non-tobacco user who has 50 grand. Because they're 65, we're gonna issue a 10 year payout on the SPIA along with the 10 year limited premium payment whole life product. For the male, the face amount issue would be 77,361 and change. And for the female, the face is $87,031. So what did you just do for this female 65? You've increased her estate by over $37,000 at issue. Keeping in mind that if she dies in the first 10 years, the remaining payments from the SPIA would also be paid. Now she says to you, well, you know, what if I keep the money in the annuity? It's making 3%, I'm in a 25% marginal tax bracket. Wouldn't I be better off doing that? Well, it would take her over 19 years just to accumulate the $87,000 we're gonna pay out on the life insurance, keeping in mind that that life insurance payment is paid income tax-free. 
Now here's the 75 year old, a little older, a little shorter life expectancy. The numbers still look good, don't they? Because this client is 75, we're gonna pay out seven years on the SPIA to the life product with a seven year paid up life product. So seven year payout on the SPIA with a seven year uh, limited premium payment whole life product. For the male, the face amount 61,516 and change. And for the female, the face is just over $67,000. So not only, you know, you, you basically increase this lady's estate at 75 by over $17,000 for the gentleman nearly 12,000, keeping in mind that if they die in the first seven years, uh, the remaining payments from the SPIA would also be paid. I tell you, I'm a licensed agent myself, have been for 40 years. I not only market this product, but have sold it. And I'll tell you that clients love the concept if they had the need and had the desire to pass money along. And once they buy, they're, they're not only gonna buy, but if you ask, you should be asking for referrals early and often because they will refer you to their friends and relatives and people they know that they have a good thing that they wanna pass on good news. So here is a, a screenshot of our, our uh, illustration software. Now this product is non-illustrated, no signed illustration is needed, but we do have great proposal software you can use that explains the product and gives you ledgers. And we also have our um, a mobile link software where you can put this right on your phone and basically have an interactive aging guide with the product information and the underwriting information and actually be able to produce a chart just like this on your smart, uh, phone or smart device. So here's the female 70, 50 grand, let's say, coming out of an annuity. She's got a cost basis of 40, that's her money. So the third column of this proposal shows the single premium of 50 grand going in, right? And out of that payment each year from the SPIA, we'll make an annual payment to the life product of $5,570 a year. Out of that payment, nearly 4,000 of it is excluded from tax. That was part of our basis. And over an interest factor over 10 years, the gain uh, and the estimated taxable income would be about $1,571. So that's what she's gonna get the 1099 on each year. Keep in mind, it's not a straight $10,000 of gain. It's 10,000 plus the interest factor over 10 years. The columns also show, of course, the life insurance benefit of 78,451 and the remaining payment or cuted lump sum of the SPIA payout because the client can take either, I'm sorry, the client's beneficiary at death of the insured can take a commuted lump sum or annual payments from that SPIA. What about required forms? We try to make this easy. On our agent website, you're gonna find, we have product toolkits set up for all of our products. So the Generation Legacy and the Single Premium Whole Life product I'm gonna talk about, we have product toolkits set up. And in the toolkit, you'll really find everything you need to sell and market our products. I'll try to show you some of those things today. But you know, you'll answer a couple of quick questions and it's automatically gonna populate your forms for you and also give you instructions on submitting your apps and completing again our point of sale underwriting, which I'll talk about in a moment. So let's jump in before we get to point of sale underwriting and talk about the second product and that is our single premium whole life product. That single premium whole life product has a lot of similarities to Generation Legacy in the fact that it's for a client whose funds not needed for daily living. It's for a client who wants to pass along an estate or create a legacy for their family and increase their estate through the use of a life insurance product. But here are the differences I'm going to point out to you. The first is those single premium funds going into this product are coming from after tax cash vehicles, CDs, money markets mutual funds, and where appropriate, 1035 the life product exchanges. The issue age, another difference, 50 to 85, little broader issue ages because we're working with after-tax cash funds. A third difference is our simplified underwriting. With this product, we can go out through eight tables of simplified underwriting, we'll talk about that. And finally, we have that same accelerated death benefit rider. The only great thing about this one is that it gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you can access the funds, I'll show you that. So issue age again, 50 to 85, based on current age or age at last birthday. The underwriting classes are either non-tobacco or tobacco, and then within those underwriting classes, you either get level one, which is standard through table four, same as you have for generation legacy, or with this product, you get a level two of underwriting, which is tables five through table eight. So a client with a few more challenging health conditions would qualify. 
Minimum premium again is only $5,000. How many of your clients have multiple CDs or money markets or cash funds in the bank where they essentially compartmentalize their funds? You know, I've got five grandkids and I've got, you know, 20 a piece set out for them and I've got my kids and I have funds set out for them and they've compartmentalized their funds. These are great prospects for this product because these are people that are trying to pass money along, but you can help them do this in a much greater income tax-free fashion. Here's another great uh, sales tip. What if you're out there selling life insurance and you're trying to smell, sell small face about life insurance uh, for final expense? And, and uh, the lady says to you, well, you know, this, Mr. Jones, I really don't need any life insurance. I have a burial account set up. Well, that means one of two things. They either have a prearrangement at the local funeral home or they probably have maybe a $15,000 CD set up at the local bank. If their kids know that's the money set aside to bury them. So here's that 70-year-old female and how the role play would work. Mrs. Jones, you're 70. You're going to live many more years. I'm sure you agree costs are going to go up. What if I was able to show you a way to take that $15,000 that's your age of 70 and provide your family with nearly a $25,000 income tax-free death benefit? Oh, by the way, if you became terminal in a nursing home or an extended care situation, we can actually get at some of that cash for you to help with end of life as well as still provide you with some paid-up life insurance. Is that something that would interest you? That's called the burial account concept. And I can't tell you how many agents get started in the single premium business selling it this way. Once they figure out how lucrative it is, they figure out quickly that the key to success in the asset transfer market is good fact finding. Not only finding the funds, but finding what the goal or the desire of the funds actually are. The average premium, by the way, we see on this product is about thirty dollars to $35,000 a year or, or per payment. Thirty to thirty-five thousand per contract. The maximum face amount for single premium whole life is expressed in terms of the maximum net amount at risk, and that's just the difference between the premium you pay and the face amount that we issue. That difference is the net amount at risk. Our software won't allow you to violate that, so don't worry about it. Cash values they accumulate again on a non-participating basis. Another great benefit and difference with this product is partial surrenders. After the first year, you can make partial surrenders within limits in the early years. So in year two, they could take out up to a 10% penalty-free surrender. Year three, 20% of the available cash. Year four, 30% of the available cash. 40% in year five, and from the sixth year on, 100% of the available cash value can be taken as a partial surrender. Loans, they're available at any time at a maximum rate of 8%. So what about that uh, accelerated death benefit rider? Same three health event triggers I gave you earlier for um, Generation Legacy. Same fact that this benefit will be paid out once in a lump sum, and these are unrestricted funds. But here are the differences. If the client says to you, you know what? I don't need any more life insurance. Give me as much cash as I can get, and, and let's end the rest of the contract. That's called a full acceleration. We'll talk about that. The other option would be, hey, I have a $100,000 face amount over here. I need $25,000 of life insurance paid up, so let's do that and accelerate the other $75,000 in face. Uh, can we do that? Yes, that's called a partial acceleration. Let's show you that. So let's use these examples. Terminal illness, same definition to qualify, 12 months or less. But now if the client wants to do a full acceleration or a partial acceleration, the rate is 95% of the face amount we're accelerating, less the 250 admin charge. If they are in a qualified nursing situation, again, the same definition to qualify for the accelerated benefit, but now if they want to do an acceleration, it's at 90%. So again, if they want to do a full acceleration, it's 90% of the full face amount of 100,000, or if they want to do a partial acceleration where you keep 25,000, let's say, paid up and 75,000 to accelerate, you would do 90% of that remaining 75,000 less the admin charge. Now, you might say to yourself, well, why is the percentages going down? Like now I'm into extended care. The client's going to live longer in each of these iterations. And any time that you're going to live longer, that means we're advancing the cash out sooner than we would a death benefit. That means there's a cost for doing that. And any accelerated death benefit rider is set up similarly. We're not going to pay out the full amount if death's not going to occur for four more years. That's when we would have paid out the life insurance benefit. 
but it's pretty nice to get this cash available. So for extended care, it's the same definition of qualify, but now they can accelerate at 80% less the admin charge. Same definition for chronic illness, two out of six activities of daily living, or the client suffers from a severe organic mental illness. We talked about that. Either definition qualifies them. So now let's look at a, the premium and death benefit. I want you to think about those people out there that have got these multiple CDs and cash accounts and are just trying to pass money along. How many, I mean, I've talked to friends of mine who say, oh, I'm setting up some CDs for my grandkids. Okay, why are you doing that? Well, I just want to pass the money along and have a compartment to do that. Well, when we show them this and we compare it to a CD, they say, oh, my God, how do you do that? So here's a 65-year-old non-tobacco user using 50000 in premium. That male at level one underwriting, we would issue a face amount of nearly $82,000. For the female, we would issue a face amount of nearly $93,000. But don't forget, we have that second level or tier of underwriting, tables five through eight. And in all ages and gender, you're only going to see about a five to $6,000 lesser amount from level two compared to level one. Not bad, is it? So if you look at this, here was that lady who was 65, was making maybe a little bit better interest right now in the bank. Rates have gone up. Let's say it's 2%, whatever it might be. But she's getting 1099 on that every year. You've increased her estate um, upon issue by nearly $43,000 for that 50 grand that she paid you. Now, if she was in a 25% tax bracket making 3% on her money, it would take her 28 years just to match that 43,000 you've increased her estate by, knowing that the life insurance is always there to be paid, what, 90, almost $93,000 income tax free. Here's the seven year old, older, shorter life expectancy, Numbers still look good, right? 50 grand for the male at level one gets you a face amount of nearly 74,000, and for the female, a face of just over 82,000. And again, level two underwriting, about a five to six thousand dollar reduction. But even at 70, you've increased this lady's estate by over 32,000 dollars at issue. Forms, same story, go to our app package out there on our agent site, get all the forms you need, and we have a lot of other great marketing materials for you. I won't get into that right now. Hope to show you one or two of these. This is the icing on the cake I've got to show you, and this is what is really the, I mean, we've got a great product, extremely competitive. Talk to our friends and your friends at IMES, and they will get you the contract. I think you're going to love the contract and the comp rates and all that, but this is the icing on the cake. We had annuity producers out there who would say, you know, I get the concept of asset transfer, but you know, I hate life insurance underwriting. I've got to wait. No, with this product, we have point of sale underwriting. So once you complete the app, you're going to pick up the phone with your client, call our call center, and in 12 minutes or less, we're going to give you an underwriting decision well over 90% of the time. It's closer to about 96% of the time. So all we are doing is going to ask your client the same health questions you completed on the paper app that you're going to submit to us. The difference is, in addition to re-asking those questions, we're going to get their permission to run the data from the MIB and the prescription drug database. That way, if we see any conflicting information out there in those databases as compared to how they answer the question, we can do live underwriting and give them that immediate decision. They love it. After the client's interview is done, any underwriting decision, this is very important, is communicated to you, not your client, regardless of whether or not you're on the call. Because sometimes you may tell us, hey, just call the client at this date and time and get the interview done, and you know that's fine. You won't be on the call, but we're always going to call you back with the underwriting decision. We do not give that to the client. It's given to you to communicate. You'll receive a confirmation number that we ask you to write on the first page of the app you're going to submit. Now, once the appointment's done, make sure you send us all the paperwork, regardless of the underwriting decision. You have to do that to complete that uh, transaction. Now, all this information about this point of sale underwriting interview is in your app package. So when you print out your forms, it's going to give you details of not only how to get your apps to us, but then how to complete this interview. For example, the phone number, 888-368-9678. The hours, 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Fridays. These are Eastern times. We do support English and Spanish languages. Other languages are available upon request. 
If you have a hearing impaired client, we have TTY services in English and Spanish. The key thing is though, the interview must be completed within five days of completing the app. Now you may say to yourself, hey, I'm out on the West Coast, I'm writing a piece of business on a Saturday, what do I do? No matter when you finish the app, pick up the phone, call the call center while you're thinking about it and leave your name and number, your client's name and number and a date and time you want us to call them. We will outbound call your client, get the interview done in 12 minutes or less, and again, call you back with the underwriting decision. If you're calling during business hours, everything is hunky-dory, we get it done, we give you the decision right then and there. How do you pre-qualify these apps? Well, we have an app for each product, and the reason we do is that for Generation Legacy, we have one tier of underwriting standards through Table 4, and for that, we have one set of medical questions, a Part A. Think of Part A questions as knockouts. If you get a yes to Part A, your client doesn't qualify through four tables of underwriting. If you get all no, height and weight, MIB, and drug history look good, we're going to issue. For single premium whole life, because we have two tiers, standards through Table 4, and then the second tier, Table 5 through Table 8, we have a Part A and a Part B. But again, think of Part A as knockouts. If you get any yeses to Part A, it means your client does now not qualify through eight tables of underwriting. But if you're all know in Part A and B, everything else looks good, we're going to issue Tier 1. If you get all know in Part A, but one yes in Part B, we're going to issue Tier 2. It's as simple as that. So with that, I'm going to take the remaining time here and try to show you just a couple of quick things on the marketing side, if I could. Let me just bring this up. So I've been talking about our agent website, and out there we have product toolkits set up for all the products you're contracted for with us. And this is just a screenshot of the first page of our agent site, and these are those toolkits up top, the color boxes. Inside this toolkit, you'll really find everything you need to sell and market with us. That's the great thing. Dive into the toolkits. I'm going to give you just a couple quick snippets of what's out there. This is the biggest one, and if you're not working with us right now, go to the site and put it as a shortcut on your phone or smart tablet. It's mobile.vaultlife.com. Write that down and go to it because once you're into mobile link, you now have an interactive agent guide in the palm of your hand. You'll have the product information, you'll have the underwriting guidelines and an interactive rate and value calculator. So you can quickly calculate all the rates and values you need because these again are non-illustrated products and uh, you can do everything right there in your connected device. Um, that ledger I showed you before for Generation Legacy, you can do that on your device. It really works pretty well. So that's Mobile Lake. We have great point of sale presentations. I'm just going to flip through these quickly. This, you know, when the client is talking about asset transfer and you're trying to explain to them what it is, they've got to understand the concept. They've got to understand the features and benefits. Conceptually, how do you explain how two products work together as one? We have all that in these presentations. And then, you know, how do you increase my estate with this product with a single lump sum? We show them that. How does the accelerated death benefit riders work? We show them that. And that way, once the client gets all that information, they simply can, you know, transition to an illustration, seeing what their numbers now look like now that they understand the basic concept. So those point of sale presentations, again, are out on our product toolkits. We talked about fact-finding. These fact-finding tools, I'm sure you have great fact-finding tools, but this is another one that can help you. You can uh, record the client's current liquid assets, uh, how if you transferred a portion of the funds into one of our products, the impact that will make on increasing their estate. The bottom of the form allows you to record their income to make sure they have enough income now and going forward. And then the top of the form are some key dialoguing questions. We also have a document out there that's called Single Premium Sales Ideas. And many of these ideas I've talked about inter intermittently or you know, throughout the presentation today, but these ideas are explained in full in that document on our agent site. When you're reading the full document, you're going to start generating quick ideas of people you can immediately go out and see based on some of these concepts, whether it's the burial account, whether it's a 1035 exchange of older paid up policies, or moving annuity money into these products. Some great sales ideas that you'll build a prospect list with. 
we had these customizable marketing flyers that you can uh, find that explains the concept of asset transfer, features and benefits of a solution, and then you can customize it with your contact information. They're out there. We have a great Excel file rate calculator where the client says, oh, I'm gonna set up CDs for my grandkids. Well, this, you can do a quick comparison of a CD versus single premium whole life based on their tax rate and the amount they're putting in, showing them the, the stark difference of what they're gonna be able to do with single premium whole life versus a CD. We have white papers, we have third-party articles. All that, again, is out on the agent website inside these product toolkits. The last thing that I'll plug here uh, before we finish is our Aruba trip. You know, IMS always has phenomenal trips. I always, you know, as, as an old field agent for many years, you know, I don't get to go on those trips anymore because I don't produce as much business as you need to to qualify. I'm doing another job. But man, they have phenomenal trips. The great thing is, if you qualify for our trips, you're probably gonna qualify for IMS trips or vice versa. So next year, we have a trip going to Aruba, the Marriott Resort and Solaris Casino, next June 5th through the 9th. You and a guest, all expenses paid. And if you're writing our single premium business, it only takes $600,000 a premium to qualify. It's probably one of the lower qualifying amounts in the industry. The great thing about our trips, it's all about fun. We don't have business meetings. It's time to relax, enjoy time with your guests and all of our leaders, and uh, we hope to see you next June in Aruba. So with that, I'm ready to pass it back over, and I want to thank everybody for picking up here on a Friday holiday weekend, and uh, we really, really appreciate your business. And thank you very much, Ines, for the great partnership we've had through the years. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put out um, one more poll question, and that is if you'd like to get contracting information um, for Baltimore Life. And while we wait on that, I any questions that you have, we'll be more than happy to answer. So... Um, Again, great company, very easy to deal with. They have great single premium life. Again, whether you're looking for qualified funds or whether, whether you're looking for non-qualified funds. I don't see... You probably see... want to take back your screen share there. Oh, gosh, yeah. For your poll. There we go. There you go. So uh, everyone will receive a recorded version of this webinar. I'll go ahead and get that sent out to you. If you have any questions at all, um, please give me a call. I'll be more than happy to get those questions answered for you. That is uh, phone number 800-255-5055. Again, this is Sandy Vicanti. So greatly appreciate everyone's time on this holiday weekend. Gary, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule as well. And I hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday weekend. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.